Good morning, God's beloved. Good morning. You can hear me in the back now, yeah? Oh, yeah, good and loud. We're glad you're here, and we're glad you're in worship. Go ahead and say hello to somebody or share the video if you're watching online. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Donna. They're with us online. Jackie and Taylor, they're online, too. We're glad you're with us. We are this church now, here in person and online. We're all together, the body of Christ, connected through the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to hear about power today. Where does real power come from? Where is its origin? Uh, you know, we have in the news, of course, different kinds of displays of power happening. We want to begin our worship uh, this morning in prayer as we remember uh, families and people in Ukraine uh, fighting for their home, fighting for their lives. Let us pray. Holy God, we know you are the true power in the universe. You create us, redeem us, sustain us. We pray especially today for those in Ukraine and Eastern Europe, those wondering where they will sleep tonight, those who have grieved for loved ones lost, for family members who stayed behind to fight. We pray for those in Russia who speak out against violence and war. Give them strength, give them power. We pray for world leaders, Lord, that you would bring them together with wisdom and find pathways to peace. You are our truth, our peace, love, and grace in the world, Lord Jesus. And we pray you would protect your people, bring an end to war and violence at the last. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We are two, way, two weeks away from Easter. Can you believe it? It's almost here. And uh, we had a beautiful weekend out there uh, fixing up our church property and painting. And, and uh, we're, we're almost there. It's always a work in progress, right? So thank you to everybody who came out to help. And, uh, especially to James Stover and, and Joanne and Alfie and, and everybody who pitched in. And they were here much longer than I was yesterday. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, we are excited to worship today. They're still coming in. They're still coming in, folks. Bring them in from the streets and the alleyways. It's a good day to be the church. We prepare our hearts and minds for worship now. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please stand as you're able for our opening hymn, For Grace You Have Been Saved, hymn number 598. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. 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 Holy One, we, we confess, confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our needs. Have mercy on us, forgive us, and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow your ways, assure us again of your love, and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Holy God, in this season of contemplation, help us to recognize that you revealed yourself in Jesus, who walked among us, and was handed over to be crucified. May we be strengthened by his presence among us today. Amen. You may be seated. We invite the children to come forward at this time for the children's message. Any kids, come on up. Come on up. It's easy. It's fun. <laughs> Look at this. It's a Good to see you. No, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Oh man, we got a flesh today and my kids are at their grandma's house. Come on. They're missing out. Well, you know what? I can tell that some of you like superheroes. Is that true? Yeah, I like Superman. So you said Superman? Yeah. Are you dad breaking your dad's Batman. heart right now? I was gonna say. <laughs> well, I see, August, you got a Superman shirt on. Just Jojo, jo, what who's your favorite superhero? I like Sonic's. Sonic's? Kind of a superhero, too. I yeah. can watch Sonic the Hedgehog, too. Yeah. What do you say, JP? Um, he says Spider-Man. Spider-Man? 
these next two weeks until Easter, and we hear the rest of this story, but remind us of your power in Jesus, who went to the cross for us. Amen. I'm so glad you all are here today. I've got stickers for you, so I want to share some of that love with you. So come on over here and grab a sticker while Dr. Lee plays us some special music, all right? I've got stickers for peace and a sticker for pizza. And a sticker for panda and puppies and robots.
Thank you, Dr. Wood. Together we read responsibly Psalm 146. Praise the Lord! Praise, praise the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will, I will sing, sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able. Chapter 19. Glory to you, o Lord. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover. And it was about noon. He said to the Jews that were there, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father in heaven, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It has been a busy weekend. A little worn out. We were guests at a wedding last night. We were here at the church working. It's been a pretty intense week all around, and you know, especially for the kids with school and homework, they got a lot going on. It was high school prom this week, in our house anyway. Projects and more. 
We're trying to keep everybody healthy. Let's get past the disease and the sickness and the illness and the colds and the allergies and all that stuff. Mom is finishing up her final uh, few weeks before graduating with her bachelor's degree in human and family development. Yeah. Working many hours on top of that, yeah. It's nearly Easter, and church activities keep me jumping. And these kids, they work hard to get our attention. Their voices are powerful. When we're young, I think we, we know parents and guardians, they have all the power, so, or so they think. Uh, but when we're kids, you know, we, we need to get their attention. We need a little bit of that power to get what we need. Better to say they have control, maybe. Control of what we eat and when we sleep and where we go and what we wear. So with four kids in our house, some have more power than others, more independence. Maybe we feel like we're losing control all the time, all the time. Yeah. Um, but these kids, all the kids, they are struggling to get what they need, so they need us. They're still finding ways to use the power that they have to use their voices, to care for themselves, to entertain themselves and get things done in our house. In our house, like in all households, there are power dynamics at play. Some things, of course, were completely powerless. When spring colds and allergies show up, we must stop what we're doing to care for a sick child. Pick them up from school, bring them home, get grandpa to come over and watch them. No COVID, just a cold. But living for two years during a global pandemic has taught us that there are many things that are beyond our control. We've shut down schools and businesses and restricted travel, tried to reduce the spread of disease with masks and vaccines. A little virus took over for a while and revealed to us how limited our power can be at times. And still, we're watching the news to see what's next. As we hear Psalm 146 remind us of the extent of God's power, the Lord who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all the creatures, God creates the power of creation to create life. The Lord executes justice, gives food to the hungry, sets prisoners free, opens the eyes of the blind, watches over strangers, cares for widows and orphans, and, oh yeah, brings the way of the wicked to ruin. All these things are in God's power portfolio. But we, and the culture we live in, we attribute most of these duties to the powers of the world. Governments and municipalities. When we are oppressed, or we witness people going hungry or lacking justice, do we look to God? or to the ones who seem to be in some position of power in our city, our state, our nation. Maybe not an either or, maybe both, I hope. Yes, we advocate for those in need. We advocate on their behalf, we speak out, and we hope against all hope that the powerful ones would use the power they have to help, rather than control, rather than hoard power and protect themselves at the expense of the people. We just heard in the news this weekend that uh, it was a former UN prosecutor calling for the president of Russia to be arrested and tried for war crimes in Ukraine, including the intentional bombing of civilian buildings, use of mass graves, and shooting and torturing prisoners. We call these crimes against humanity. What will come of this? Who has power to bring in this world leader gone rogue? At this point, it feels like scorekeeping. We must build the case, right? And how the invasion will end is still unknown and still so many suffer. So we may believe, we pray that God will bring Putin's unjust plans to ruin. And what do we do in the meantime? Where do we turn? Who's got real power to help and save? We feel powerless too. From the beginning of this Gospel of John, we've heard about God's power. We've heard the power of God is present in the world. Remember? The Word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. God was in the world, but 
what would God do with the powers of the world? Jesus went around teaching and showing signs of power, demonstrating it, turning water into wine, check, healing disease, yes, walking on water, feeding people, even bringing his dead friend Lazarus back to life. Jesus was showing the true power of God in the world, made those who held world power fearful, put him at risk. Pilate, we hear in the story today, was afraid when he heard Jesus had claimed to be the son of God. If this was true, power was at risk for Pilate. He could lose control. And the town full of faithful people there to celebrate the Passover, he didn't want to lose control then, especially. And to lose control would mean disaster for Pilate, for the emperor to whom he was accountable. And the Jewish leaders must have been afraid too. Pilate would not accommodate their request. Jesus could cause an uproar among the people who were following him, and their power would be at risk too. They could lose control. But who really has power? Who has power in this story? Who has power in our world? Not me. Uh, I know when bedtime comes, and the kitchen is cleaned up, and I give the command, time to brush teeth. I, I only have to say it like 29 or 30 times. It's, it's fine. The kids know this is their cue. Find a snack. Find a toy. Dig out a game. Go hide in the backyard. Anything to get out of bedtime. To stall. I recognize it now. I'm a pro. The kitchen is closed, I decree. And they overpower me. Piece of toast, a banana an apple, finally, I can rally them to get off to bed. My vulgar display of power amounts to nothing. It's for you. <laughs> and I'm exhausted at the end of the night. We heard last week that the Jewish leaders were using their power to bring Jesus to Pilate. And they remind Pilate of his duty to the emperor, whose power looms over this entire episode, even though he's not present, right? The religious leaders have made up their minds, and they want this governor, Pilate, to crucify Jesus, a punishment reserved for Roman citizens, which Jesus is not, or rebels, a crime of which Jesus has not been explicitly accused. Pilate doesn't know what to do. Finally gives in, has him beaten. The soldiers there, they guard Jesus, and they use their power to mock him. They dress him up as a king, wearing a crown made of thorns, watching him bleed, showing how human he really is. Well, we've already been told, go back to the first chapter again, that he came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. That's power. That's really powerful. And I want to say that changes everything for us. Because the chief priests cry out, crucify him before Pilate. Jesus is not recognized as powerful because he doesn't resemble an image of one who brings justice, who casts out the wicked with a sword, with weapons, with troops. He doesn't resemble our image of that either. When even in his weakest moments, Jesus is truly this righteous ruler. The judge who has the real power to give life, even bring life from death. In John's gospel, the ones who fail to recognize Jesus bring on judgment themselves. The ones who know him witness. They go and tell. Remember the stories we've heard them, the royal official. The man born blind, the woman at the well, they recognize him. They felt his power in them. And they can see that he is the power of God in the world. Pilate tries to witness to his own power, but Jesus tells him, you would have no power over me unless it were given to you from anothen, unless it came from above, this, this Greek word anothen can mean from above, but also can mean from the first, from the beginning. We 
heard that in the beginning of this gospel too. Jesus was in the beginning with God, was God. That's where Jesus is from. That's where the power that Jesus has is from, from the beginning, from God, from above. Jesus knows the source of power and indeed is the power in the world of God. Jesus is from above the Son of God who bleeds under a crown of thorns, fully human, fully divine. Jesus is the same God who gives us power through the Holy Spirit. The one condemned to die for us is from above and still steps into the world to bleed like us, to be harassed like us and punished like us and condemned like us. But he is the word. He is truth. He is the way for us. He feeds us and heals us and gives us back our sight so that we can see him and recognize him in the world, to see what God is really doing with real power. Because Jesus didn't come into our world with the power of God to control us, but to liberate us, to set us free in his life and ministry. We see it. Jesus carried God's real power of grace into the places where people were hurting, into places where people would hurt him, where they would not know or recognize him, a world controlled by fear and death and destruction, perpetrated by individuals holding on to some tentative power. The world condemned him as a radical, as an outsider, as an insurgent, and we wouldn't speak up for him either testify to the truth in him, or even admit that we knew him, the heavenly king who would bring healing and peace to those in need of help, to those under the fists of rulers, ones waging war in order to increase their power. Now, Jesus' kingship, Jesus' real power, the power of God comes from anothen, from above, from God who creates, who gracefully gives life and breath and forgiveness and love for us every moment of every day with every breath. So when we hear this word, life and love, and we believe, we recognize Jesus is in our world. Jesus is with us. Jesus is love and healing and peace. And we know he's with us. And when we recognize this power in the world, we go and we tell, don't you want to tell somebody about this power in your life and the way that it's made you new, helped you to see, put you at peace when things are crazy all around us. So we believe and we recognize Jesus and we go when we witness and we tell the story and we invite others, invite them to Easter, two weeks. We share faith with our children and our families and move forward with faithful imagination, imagining what we can be now that we have been liberated, that we have been made new. What can we be now? We try to see the world the way God sees it, worthy of love and attention and care. And even when the powers that be in the world try to condemn peace, try to shackle love, and attempt to legislate division, we will not be afraid. We're not going to be controlled by fear. Because we recognize where true power lies, the power of grace. And God's love is already loose in the world. It cannot be contained. And even though he was sent to be crucified, we know the end of the story. Spoiler alert. Love and peace and service and gratitude, forgiveness and promise are risen from the grave. And the real power rises with them. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Let's sing our hymn of the day. Beneath the cross of Jesus.
faith as has been given to us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge us the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus, you are the word, the true power in your church. Free us from the ways that no longer serve the gospel and bring forth forward leaders who imagine fresh ways of doing the ministry. Give us courage in the face of change. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Jesus, you are the word of creation. Reverse the tra trajectory of climate change and environmental catastrophes. Revive habitats already impaired by human disregard. Amplify the voices of climate scientists and researchers working to chart a new course. Open our eyes to recognize our role as caretakers. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Jesus, you are our peace. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Protect the people of Ukraine and Russia, that they would see themselves as neighbors and give the power of wisdom to their leaders. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Jesus, your word heals us. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed, for those experiencing homelessness and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick or recovering, especially Vinny, Bruce, Joan, Lois's nephew, Chris, Linda, Sarah's nephew, Logan, Maria, Tammy's sister, Terry, Allison and Quinn, Kay, Tony, Eldon, Ellen, Kelly, Bob and Debbie, Sharon and the family of her brother, Reverend Bill Graff, Peggy and Wendell, Pete, Debbie. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Jesus, you are our living hope. Direct this church into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Open our mouths to testify and give witness to your expansive love. Amplify voices that are ignored or devalued. Deliver us especially from the evil of racism. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Jesus, you bring us from death to life. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for all the saints who have attained the prize of their heavenly call. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. We share a sign of that peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the power of God to heal forgive, restore, and give us eternal life. We confess in this congregation, in front of this community in the world, that this is a gift for all people, and that includes you if you are so inclined. And so now come to the banquet, for now all is ready. You may be seated. Please stand as you're able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you now and into eternal life. Amen. Amen. Amen.
us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to the world in need. Amen. You may be seated. Wow, what, what a weekend it's been. I want to start off by saying happy birthday. We've got some happy birthdays here. Uh, my father-in-law here, Chris Santo Champion, just turned 81 this week. Yeah, thank you. The big 18. Yeah. We got 18. Oh, he's 18 now. No, Finally made it. No, no. The big eight. 81, 81. And uh, happy anniversary today to Roger and Christine. Today is their 29th anniversary. Yes. It's like springtime. They're celebrating all these celebrations. We love it. Uh, I want to say thank you again to James and Joanne Stover and Alfie and Stacy and Paula and everybody that came out to help out yesterday. Maxine and Pat and Jordan and Isaac. We, paint, we painted the front of the church. We pulled weeds. We built a new step at the end of the stairwell. There's a railing coming. There's more painting to do. Don't worry. We've got more jobs for you. And uh, it's just exciting to see this new life is happening here at Living Hope, right? Amen. Man, good stuff happening. So we've got a, a one more Wednesday in Lent. We're going to be meeting here Wednesday evening, 5.30 for Soup Supper. Come and join us, the last one of the season. And uh, we'll eat a lot of soup together. And then we'll worship and we're praying. We're praying for each other. Uh, it's been a really, it's been a powerful moment of healing prayer uh, as we join and and uh, we'll be laying hands on people and praying for one another as we uh, get ready to move into Holy Week, which is here soon. So uh, we've got a lot coming up for Easter. I'll tell you about that in a second. But today, we've got Bible study happening over in Barnes Hall. We've talked a lot about wisdom. What is wisdom? Sophia, we talked about. And hearing about wisdom in the Old Testament. And what does that have to do with Jesus? We talked a lot about that last week. So I look forward to the discussion today. I uh, hope you can join us online or, or here in person. We're here we will have a special meeting. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We've got palms. We're going to march around. We're going to sing. And then after worship, we're going to have a quick special meeting so that we can authorize the purchase of two new air conditioning units for Edwin's Hall. And I'm going to give you an update on where we are with that project next week. So, uh, we, But the point is we need to get here to vote to make the expense. And, and that's just a rule here in our congregation. So I hope we'll see you. And you can hang out for just a little bit after worship. It won't take long. Easter lilies. Sign up if you want uh, Easter lilies as we beautify our sanctuary on Easter morning. You can uh, sign up for one and uh, $10 each, and you can take one home after Easter. Now, Easter Sunday, here's the deal. It hasn't changed. If you're, if you're new here, though, you might not know this. 7 a.m., we're here for worship. Just as the sun has risen, we are outside in the courtyard celebrating, uh, and we look forward to seeing you there if you want to come early, because it's followed by breakfast, people. Our church council will be providing an Easter breakfast for you, and uh, if you've got folks, if you'd like to volunteer and help set up or clean up, and you want to come early and do that, too, we're grateful for you. 9 a.m., we're here for worship. And then, kids, listen up. It's Easter egg hunt time. And I, you, you are all so good at this. By the time I usually get out there, it's all done. I always miss the Easter egg hunt. They're so quick. Uh, but uh, we thank you for that. So come and join us for Easter here at Living Hope. We're excited. And I can't believe it's Easter already, and we're going we're gonna to pack the house, right? Man, oh yeah. Uh, we will be um, working on. Uh, we'll have bread for communion on Easter. How about that? Yeah, bread. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited for that. That's all I have to tell you right now. Uh, welcome to friends and guests visiting from the Metavellis Metavellis family. You brought some friends with you. You want to say, introduce them, put them on the spot. So, uh, Ben is. Ben is a good friend of mine from seminary and also my alibi. Uh, ben is here with his wife, Monica, and um, his daughters, Phoebe and Michaela. So give them a big hello today. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. And Christy Lynn, I know you want to introduce your guests, right? Yeah, but I, they don't know them. <laughs> Nineteen years old, yeah? Yeah. Welcome, welcome. We're glad you're here. Awesome. Oh, 
Oh yeah, you came at the right time. Very competitive, y'all better watch out. Well, we, we do have youth group and Sunday school happening over in Edmonds Hall uh, right after worship today, so we're glad you're here and uh, look forward to having you with us in Bible study, right Damien? Yeah. All right, awesome. Please rise as you're able for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor, smile on you, and give you peace. Amen. 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 Let's sing our closing hymn, Praise the One. <laughs>